What's going on everybody? Vinny Costa here, editor of Street Muscle Magazine. I'm out here in Bowling Green at uh, Beach Bend Raceway uh, covering Holly's Mo Party, as you guys can see. Um, and I have a really cool car to show you guys, so I'm gonna flip the camera around, talk to the owner a little bit, let him explain. All right, sir, why don't we start with your name, who you are, where you're from, and then we can jump into your car. My name is John Gaddy, Kenosha, Wisconsin. Uh, can you say that one more time? John Gaddy, Kenosha, Wisconsin. Cool. Hey, thanks for doing this, John. We really appreciate it. Well, thank you. So uh, we can see your awesome car behind you and your awesome shirt. I can only surmise that the two are connected somehow. So uh, this is a gift uh, back when I was in the, the Dodge Challenger Hellcats uh, years ago. A friend of mine in Texas actually uh, gave me this. Uh, Jerome Stone, shout out to you. But uh, part of the Texas Hellcat chapter. So. Very cool, man. Well, I was you know cruising through uh, the, the raceway here saw dozens of cars all of them very cool but yours really stuck out to me um it's a wagon but it's it's not all it appears to be can you tell us a little bit about the car and uh what you've done to it why you got it all that it's a uh it's a 1969 dodge coronet 500 nine passenger station wagon um looks largely stock on the outside original red car wood grain car um luggage rack um what i did was i actually did a, a dodge challenger hellcat swap with it um, it has a Jake's Performance uh, Stage 3 4L80. It um, uses a CompuShift controller. Um, Moser 60 rear end with a 373 uh, rear gear. Um, has an AC cruise control. Uh, That's awesome. Car probably gets on the highway at 70 miles an hour, probably gets 18, 19 miles a gallon. Awesome. With, with the cruise control on. Okay, so before we get into the, like, the real uh, detail of the car and I ask you to pop the hood and all that, um, why don't you tell us a little bit about like the the inspiration for this project? Because this isn't the first car you've built, this isn't the first car you've swapped, um, and this one's a little bit special. Can you tell us about that? Exactly. I, I also have a, a 1968 Plymouth GTX I did a Hellcat swap in. Uh, that was uh, 2018. And uh, went, to, went to actually go on a road trip with that car with my wife and two girls, and we found out that car is actually a little bit too small. So I, I started the hunt for a station wagon. Um, of course, I had to be Hellcat swapped. Uh, nothing else was going to do, and I, I came across this car. And uh, kind of the rest is history. I, you know, I started restoring it, bought it in April of uh, 2019. And uh, this car was actually started when COVID first hit in about April of uh, 2020. I started doing the, pro the, the whole project in the swap. So Wow, so you were just cruising on this project, man. Yeah, it, uh, it's a total nut and bolt rotisserie type resto if you want to call it a restoration. Um, I did it in just over 11 months. Holy cow. Um, that is uh, with working a full-time job, trying to you know hang out with the family and, and do the family thing and just uh, trying to balance everything. But, well, now uh, you get to do even more with the family. Yeah, exactly. That's awesome, man. Exactly. So when you got the car, uh, what, did it, what was the condition? What was it originally like? What did it have under the hood, all that? When I bought this car, it was, uh, it was the original paint car, original wood green. Um, really, nobody had ever really taken the car apart with the exception of they swapped in a 440 automatic. Um, it, it ran and drove. I, I drove the car around for a couple months. Um, but at that point, I you know I, I knew I was going to do a Hellcat swap, so I sold the complete driveline out of it. Um, but the car was largely rust-free. It was a, a southern car. Um, I didn't really have to do very little, if any, rust repair on the car. Very cool. So, which always makes a project like this easier. Brother, I think we're going to start experiencing some rain here pretty soon. So... Uh, I guess we've got to hurry. Uh, can you pop the hood for us and show us um, the Hellcat swap? Oh man, look at that, that's awesome. Okay, so uh, did you, once you took the 440 out, uh, you started the rotisserie process, you knew it was gonna get Hellcat swapped. Did you like, was there any inclination to go after like uh, you know, a wrecked Hellcat and pull it out, or you knew you were gonna get a crate. How how'd that whole process go? This was I actually had the engine before I bought this car. Gotcha. Um, I bought this. It was a, it was a 2019 engine out of a wrecked 2019 Challenger. So I knew I would be Hellcat swapping something. Um, obviously, it ended up being a station wagon, but I, I had the engine, a low mile used engine. Um, so it was it was kind of just always sitting there destined for some type of car. Very cool. Um, okay, so in the interest of time, what was uh, the most challenging part of the swap and what was like, I guess, the most rewarding part of the entire build? I, I think the most challenging was to try to install it, but to make it look like a factory type installation where it just wasn't thrown in there, you know, wires and everything just kind of hang in there. Uh, make it to where it's very presentable, very clean install. Um, and the most rewarding, I, I believe, I, it has to be people's faces when they see the car. 
know, the best thing is watching somebody walk by the car and they do a double take when they see what's underneath the hood. <laughs> and then you get the stories from everybody. Everybody has a station wagon memory or story from their childhood. So I, I think that this car makes, that's what makes this car so special. You know, it, it, it brings it out in people. Is it, it reminds them, you know, of, of memories and, and things that have happened in their past. It's very unique and really the only uh, in indicator that you would have that it's been swapped is that little badge right there and I really love all the little details that you've gone and, and, and put in here to you know those little clues kind of that's really cool I mean just like these uh, these front caps that you had made those are awesome can you tell us about those those are actually reproductions of uh, 1969 and a half Dodge and Plymouth 812 promotional discs they put these car those on those cars and basically they were a push promotional ad for those special cars that they built um, what these do is they bolt to the spindle and they stay stationary as you're going down the road. So you, 50 miles an hour, you, it stays and it looks just like you see it there. It, it looks like it's sitting still. I know it, man. On the way over here, um, I, I caught myself doing it. And like, I'm familiar with these cars, uh, but I, I, I never actually seen them in person, like rolling. So I was like, oh man, it kind of looks the, like he's dragging yeah, his tires. It's, it's really, watching people do the do a double take and point out, hey, tell me, your wheel's dragging, your wheel's dragging. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's pretty cool. That's awesome, man. Can you show us a little bit of the interior? Because that's another uh, really cool car, uh, part about these cars. Interior, is, it's it's really close to factory stock. Uh, the only thing I, I changed is is I added a Dakota Digital uh, gauge cluster. Yeah, that's part of their RTX line, I think. It is. That's, that's awesome. That's a brand new uh, uh, product there. They just introduced that a couple months back. So Very cool. Um, it's a, it's a nine passenger car, so I changed the front from the bench seat to buckets. I was noticing that earlier. Yep. I didn't know if that was stock or not. The only reason I did that is I, I like that armrest. You know? yeah. yeah. It's, it just makes it more comfortable to drive. That's killer, man. And we get the second row seating. Second row seating here, you know, it kind of self-explanatory. Regu regular bench, but it also folds down. This will also fold down. You, you can haul plywood in this car if you want. It's Very cool. cool. And one of my favorite features about these wagons is the tailgate slash door back here. So you can either swing it out like that, which is so cool. And then you got like a step here for the kids to climb back in there or your drunk buddies, who knows. Uh, but uh, no, that's awesome, man. And then, but you can also fold it down as a tailgate, which is really cool. Man, what a killer car. Hey, listen, man, we really appreciate your time. You're showing us your awesome car. Uh, where can people follow you on social media? I, you know, I, I really don't do much social media. Okay. A little, little bit of Facebook, just some specialized, you know, station wagon Mopar groups. Okay. Uh, but as far as like any pages, I, I really don't do. Are there any forums media. that you're a part of that maybe like you post your car or anything like that? Uh, you know, like uh, the Mopar B Body Forum. Uh, okay. You know, do a little bit on there. Mopar station wagon stuff. A um, little bit on there. It's it's there just isn't enough time in a day for for social media. And <laughs> I got try you. To drive and build cars, and so it's uh yeah. Fair enough, man. So you guys heard it here. You can only get it on Street Muscles YouTube. Check it out. We'll catch you next time. Peace.